G'day guys and welcome to me lab. Now, this is one of those little extra credit videos I'm gonna do for our Zero to Zelda ARPG tutorial series. One of the things that people asked about was just tracking our player position when we go into and out of scenes. So that's what we're gonna have a look at today. So I'm gonna use our lesson 11 complete script and just build on that. That's the one where we added our cave scene. So we're just gonna edit that one to show you how you can control that uh, player positioning. So let's jump into Godot and have a look at it. Okay, jump into Godot, get your project loaded up. And the first thing we're going to do here is now just FYI, this is the uh, complete lesson 11 um, stuff. If you want to grab that from your GitHub, go ahead. Otherwise, you know, just follow along. It's all good. So we want to go and uh, actually make a new script. So file, oops, file, new script, and it will be called global. All right, there's our global script. We only need to do something rather simple in here. And that is, we want to have this variable, last world position, and we want it to be a vector two. We want to grab two bits of info. Uh, we want our X and our Y axes, basically. So that's our variable, that's our global script. That's all we had to do in there. So project, project settings, um, go to auto load, click on the folder, global, open. Now, for whatever reason, this sometimes takes a while on my machine, but hopefully we won't have that drama. Oh, oh spinning pinwheel of death. All right, so we're going to click add. Um, that's then going to add it to our list here, and then we can close it. Now, once we've got that closed, that's actually all we need to do in our global script for now. The next thing we're going to do is go and have a look in our world scripts. I'm just going to pause this uh, until we stop having our spin wheel de uh, spinning pinwheel of death, and then uh, I'll resume this in our world script. Okay, now that's saved. So we've got our global script made and set up to auto load. We're going to our world script now. Currently all we've got is we're extending our node to D. We've got our current scene's name, world. Our change scene is set to false. We're passing on our ready function. This one handles when we walk in, um, walk into the, the cave uh, area 2D we made to set our um, start that change of scene and this one handles the change of scene. So how is this going to change? Well, all that first bit is exactly the same. We want to add something into our ready function, however, which um, is to handle some of this movement. So let's pop this in here. Now, one of the things I sometimes have an issue with when I'm copying stuff in is I'll copy things in that have used spaces instead of tabs and then you've just got to fix it up. But there we go. So if global last world position is, does not equal that um, vector two that we've already done, we want to grab it and then just have a slight offset. That's that one. Um, in our on cave entered, we need to add something in here as well. So after we've got if body is in group player and before we have the change scenes equals true and change scenes we want to add in a line that's this line here oops there we go uh, if uh, sorry so if our body is in group player we want our global last world position to be that tile map player position then we want to set our change scenes to true and change our scene and then if we have a look down here this all stays the same as well so that is that bit done that's our world scene done all right, so we've saved our uh, global script that we made. We've saved our world script that we edited. Our cave script shouldn't need any changes at all. What I want to do now, just so we can actually make sure this works, let's go to our 2D view of our world, drag our player over there somewhere, because remember the way we got that set up is uh, we, we're trying to test to make sure it comes out where it went in. So we just need our player to be in a slightly different location now. Save that, let's uh, run it. Dun, dun, dun. So we start over there now, we can go into our cave and when we come out, hopefully we come out directly below the cave. And we do, so that's it, that is it. That is all you had to do to make that different. The reason we didn't do that during the, the actual lessons is just I didn't want to introduce a global script at that point, but we've gone past that now so it's easy to, cha to change that around. So that is all you have to do. You just need to have, let's do a quick tour, go back to our scripts. So we need a global script that has our last world position and we store that as a vector two. Then in our world, we want to have a ready function um, that's checking on that and setting it. So this is a zero and then five. That's just having a, a five um, pixel offset on the Y axis when we re-emerge because we don't want to land straight back onto the trigger. Um, and then we add in this line here, global last world position. So that's just grabbing it and that one stays the same. So that's it. It's actually only a couple of lines of code to get it done. But um, it, when we go through these tutorials, it's all I'm always trying to decide, is it too early for this sort of change and all that sort of stuff. But there you go. That's pretty easy. I hope you got something out of it and your world will look amazing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.